come home, Lord our God. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go into the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us turn unto God and confess our sins. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of eternal love, you sent us your only begotten Son as our Savior. 
Give us the grace to be true disciples, walking in the way of his commandments, and loving each other as he loves us, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, the Creator and Redeemer of all the faithful, grant the soul of your faithful departed handmaiden Wanda forgiveness of her sins. May our devout prayers obtain for her the promise of eternity by our Savior and Master Jesus Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. This evening, in the octave of the fifth Sunday of Easter, we take the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable, considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They, there strengthened, they strengthened the spirits of their disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord, in whom they had put their trust. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Attilia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. The response for tonight's song. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Alleluia. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Let them make known your might to the children of Adam and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The second reading is taken from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her, for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor mourning, wailing, or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Since you have purified yourselves by obedience to the truth for sincere mutual love, 
Love one another intensely from a pure heart. Alleluia. We know that we have to have sympathy in our life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not love their brothers whom they have seen death, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself. And God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you should also love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered this evening. You know, when Jesus chose the first apostles, he did not look for um, educated men. Rather, he looked for humble and the Lord knew the hearts of the ones that he chose. John, who is referred to as the Beloved, was by all accounts the youngest one. And we find that after all the other apostles, save Judas, met martyrs' deaths, there was one who remained, John the Beloved. He did not have the intellect of Paul or Saul of Tarsus. He did not attend rabbinical training. He was a fisherman. And as long as you knew how to cast your nets and pull the nets in and repair the nets, you really did not have to have formal education. 
But John got the message that Christ shared with them for the three years of his ministry. And we find that in the Gospel of John, in his three letters to the church, and in the book of Revelation, the message of love comes to the forefront. One of my most favorite of all books of the New Testament is the first letter of John. If you have not read it, please make it a part of your reading. John presents to his readers a form of an examination of conscience to see whether or not the hearers of the word were living up to the message that Jesus had proclaimed. After John testifying again of what he had seen and what he had heard and what he had touched concerning the word of life, he proclaimed that this was done so that Christians could have fellowship with one another. For he says, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus. And that we are writing this, that our joy may be complete. One of the th first things that John does for an examination is first of all, he proclaims that God is light and in him there is no darkness. But he also now approaches his readers and he says, but if we walk in light as he is in light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' his Son cleanses us from all sin. But now John says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. John continues to write in the first chapter by saying, Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, the commandment of love, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. He then portrays in another examination of the hearer. He says, he who says he is in light and hates his brother is in the darkness still. He who loves his brother abides in light and in it there is no cause for stumbling. He tells us through his writings, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And that the world, when it passes away, the lust will pass with it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And throughout the first book of John, he again reaches out and he calls his hearers children of God. And he says, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that everyone who puts their hope in this purifies themselves as he is pure. 
And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we hear in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the commandment of loving one another. It is very easy to love friends, but Jesus asks us to go one step farther and to love as he loved those that we may disagree or have differences with. And so may we take the writings of John in his first letter, and most importantly, the gospel of Jesus, that is a gospel of love, and apply it to our lives the best that we can every single day, for indeed we are, through that sacrifice of Christ, children of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. Alleluia.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name. For our and for that of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the sacrifice of your Son shows us the true essence of your love. May these gifts which we place before you this evening make us holy and lead us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord. Look with favor upon the gifts we offer you this evening on behalf of the soul of your faithful departed handmaiden, Wanda. Grant that her soul may be united with you in all of eternity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself 
so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the back of the house. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought for the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your handmaiden, Wanda, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleeps in peace. same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed the blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers of their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our
us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter, Paul, is also Andrew, and all the saints grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. <coughs> Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art God. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, Make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
<clears throat> Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through the grace of this Holy Eucharist, may we come to love one another, that all may know that we truly are your disciples, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our fervent prayers for the repose of the soul of your faithful handmaiden Wanda, and grant that through this holy sacrifice her soul may be cleansed from all earthly transgressions and attain everlasting life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man with, was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word. Became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. this evening and we pray for those who are not with us this evening I bring to mind a few of the announcements I will be flying out tomorrow morning for Pittsburgh Pennsylvania where I will be attending a multi-day conference of the National Mission and Evangelism Commission I'm scheduled to return late Wednesday evening I placed in the bulletin, in the case of any unforeseen emergency, Father Adam Chodronetsky may be contacted, and his number is in the bulletin. 
Um, as you probably realized last week, if you did have a chance to watch Holy Mass, the announcements were cut from the tape. I was talking to Chris Collins, and we both agreed that it's not always, as they would say, kosher to let people know that you're going to be away for three or four days. And so that was the reason that we held off from um, announcing uh, that I was going to be away for a few days. I bring to mind that um, this week, because I will still be in Pittsburgh on Wednesday, there will be no May devotions. I do bring to mind that on Friday, uh, there will be Holy Mass as well as on Thursday and then Friday. But please also be aware that on Friday in the afternoon, I'll be traveling to Woonsocket, Rhode Island for um, a meeting of the uh, Eastern Diocesan Commission on Scouting. I'll be returning later that evening. Um, next Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Easter, uh, prior to Holy Mass, we're going to bless a new American flag and it will be raised over our cemetery for Memorial Day. With that being said, also I placed in the announcements, Monday, May 27th, Memorial Day, there will be a Memorial Day program be held at the Commons in South Deerfield. We ask that if your time permits, that you please come in and participate. And then following the program, there will be uh, a parade that will be traveling to uh, some of our cemeteries. And um, the, the final stop will be at our cemetery where there will be prayers that will be offered. Um, the only other thing is, again, on Tuesday, on Tuesday, there I need to take another trip to Winsocket, Rhode Island, this time for the Eastern Diocese liturgical commission of which I am a part. I'll be returning later that afternoon and on that day, Tuesday, May 28th, the day after Memorial Day, there will be at 7 o'clock p.m. a monthly meeting of the parish committee. Is there anything else that I failed to mention? Okay. One more thing I need to mention. I had a little bird that came and visited me and he said, you need to announce that there's another birthday um, of one of our members. And uh, Wayne, happy birthday. Uh, and if we can, as we've done in the past, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Let us conclude uh, with a final prayer for the living as well as for the deceased. God bless you and keep you safe, and God willing, we'll see each other again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister in blessed memory, Wanda Corber, eternal rest grant unto her soul, O Lord. May she rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.